Welcome to St. Augustine. We are so excited to be taking you with us over the next few days to explore this beautiful historic coastal town. St. Augustine's a city Dennis and I have been to several times in our past and it's one we absolutely love coming to. And this trip is extra special because we came in December when they have something that's super special for the month of Christmas called the Knights of Lights. St. Augustine is already such a magical town to begin with, but it's made even more magical with all of the beautiful lights. After getting some sustenance at PK Roosevelt Room for breakfast this morning with our friends, we are full and we are ready to explore. We're gonna be starting our adventure off today exploring Old Town, which is the historic center of St. Augustine and where most tourists and visitors coming to the city spend their time. Ponce de Leon, a Spanish conquistador, arrived in Florida in 1513 as a part of his quest for gold. Despite the Native American tribes that had called this area home for centuries, Leon claimed the area for the Spanish crown. St. Augustine is commonly referred to as the oldest city in the United States, predating Plymouth Colony and Jamestown by roughly 50 years. But the city, which was founded in 1565 by Pedro Menendez de Avillas, isn't necessarily the first. It's just the oldest continuously occupied settlement in the U.S. Many of the historic buildings within Old Town were originally built with wood, but after environmental hazards and fires plagued the city, the Spanish shifted to using a natural limestone rock made from compressed coquina shells that was mined in the King's Quarry on Anastasia Island. St. George Street, personally, it's not really our favorite. It's very touristy. There's lots of kitschy little museums, including the oldest wooden schoolhouse. Ask us how we know it's kitschy. But we prefer just to stroll all of Old Town. There's so many beautiful different little hidden streets, and it's so cool to see the coquina buildings. Definitely just stroll along. Don't be stuck to the one little tourist area. Even though this is the oldest continuously inhabited city in the United States, there's only about 36 of the original super old Spanish homes. Most of them post-date that because a lot of the buildings ended up burning down when pirates attacked. It's still really, really beautiful, but they're not quite as old as many people think. There's lots of tours all around. After several attacks from the British pirates in the mid-1600s, one burning the entire city of St. Augustine down, the Spanish decided to fortify St. Augustine, having only one northern entrance to the city and using the Castillo de San Marcos, a military fortress built in 1672 as the city's major defense along the shores of the Mantanza River. From the 1930s to the late 1990s, the National Park Service kept the moat that surrounds the fort filled with water. However, as cracks became more prevalent, they realized that the moat was originally meant to be kept dry in order to preserve the integrity of the foundation of the fortress. So the water has since been removed. The fort's walls sit at 30 feet high and 14 feet thick, with a single entrance that was manned by soldiers 24 hours a day. The Spanish occupied the fort from its construction until 1763, when the British took control through the Treaty of Paris that ended the French and Indian War. The Spanish, Native Americans, and African American communities that lived in St. Augustine during Spanish rule fled when the British took over. But Britain's reign didn't last long. They eventually lost control, ceding it back over to Spain after losing the American Revolution in 1784. Then, in 1821, the Spanish ceded Florida to the United States, where it's remained in U.S. control ever since. The U.S. renamed the Castillo de San Marcos to Fort Marion and used it primarily as a jail for Native American tribes, including Cheyennes, Apaches, Kiowas, Upper Creek, and Seminoles, including one of the prominent leaders, Osceola, from the Upper Creek tribe. After their forceful removal by Andrew Jackson's Indian Removal Act in the mid-1800s, tribes from across the country were held captive here in an attempt to break their spirit, separate them from their culture and lands, and indoctrinate them into American society. Drawings can be found on the walls of the fort depicting cultural practices and beliefs from the various tribes that were locked up here. A tour group over there from a school group. I'm like slowly listening in, trying to get all the fun facts about Castillo de San Marcos. We love coming to places like this. It reminds us a lot of Campeche, where you can you can visit the Castillo there and go on top. And it's just really cool to see this part of our history. Today is not our first day exploring St. Augustine. 
We came last night and met up with our friends who were celebrating their birthday. We just went out and had an awesome time. We ended up getting a drink at the Teeny Martini Bar, a very popular spot for people to grab drinks in St. Augustine. We also went to dinner at one of our favorite restaurants. We've been several times and every time it completely blows us away. Ice Plant Bar, which is inside of an old ice plant factory that's been restored into this really cool restaurant. They have great food, amazing cocktails. They like mold their ice for each specific drink. It's a super unique experience, a definite must visit if you're coming. And it is on top of or next to St. Augustine Distillery. So you can do distillery tasting tours there as well, which is a very fun experience we've done in the past. Tonight, we are going to try and grab food at one of our other favorite restaurants in St. Augustine, the Floridian. It is very popular and when I checked online they didn't have any reservations so we're just gonna kind of wing it and fingers crossed that we'll be able to get in. The city will definitely put you in the holiday spirit. The lights are beautiful. They have them adorning all of the buildings. The main park, the Plaza de Constitucion, also has lights hanging from all of the trees and it really is something special. There are several tours you can take if you're interested in seeing all of the lights because it, it goes through a pretty extensive part of Old Town of the historic center. So walking can be fatiguing. You can always, of course, take a trolley ride. That's a very popular way, but they do offer special Christmas tours. We ended up seeing one last night that you actually get taken around by either the Grinch or Scrooge, which was really fun. And they go all out. I mean, the Grinch was very Grinch. So it's a very fun holiday activity you can do in the area, but you can also just walk around like we are and take in all of the beautiful lights. I hope wherever you are, you're getting a little bit of Christmas spirit. If not, I hope this video brings a little Christmas joy to you these holidays. In the late 1800s, oil and railroad tycoon Henry Flagler started to transform St. Augustine building the Hotel Alcazar, which is home to the Leitner Museum today, and the Ponce de Leon Hotel, which is now Flagler College. You can take a guided tour of the historic Ponce de Leon Hotel, or simply walk inside to get a taste of the grandeur from the Gilded Age, which is especially beautiful at Christmas. I can't believe it, but we actually got in to the Floridian. This is a very popular restaurant. We got lucky, they had outdoor seating. I think it's reservation only inside, which if you can get inside, it is such fun, funky, old Florida vibes. And their menu is so, so, so creative. They have awesome salads, lots of vegan, vegetarian options. We ended up getting three dishes because we're very hungry and we're kind of low on food at the house anyway. So if we have leftovers, Perfect. We got brisket tacos with this like papaya salad on top. I ended up getting a grits and flounder dish and then Dennis got a meatloaf sandwich. So we were gonna be in for a treat. It's huge. Really flavorful. The meat's tender. Mm. Yoo-hoo. After exploring the historic center of St. Augustine, we are ready to just chill and kind of be away from all the crowds, which is perfect because we are staying at Anastasia State Park, which is about a 13 minute drive from the historic center and it is right along the beach. And I am ready for some beach time. Thankfully, we have our electric e-bikes, which means I can just hop right on over without even really having to do much work. not that warm of a day. I think I'm stretching it by calling it a beach day. But you know what? Sometimes you just need to put your feet in the sand, hear the waves crashing. This is the perfect place to do it. We decorated the RV for the holiday season this year. Feels good getting festive. Last year in Mexico just didn't feel like Christmas. This year we're kind of going all out. Bringing the decorations with us everywhere we go feels very special. 
And St. Augustine definitely got us in the holiday spirit. The lights are just so beautiful. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to explore St. Augustine with us. I think we're gonna sign off the vlog here for you because we are about to cozy up and watch one of our favorite Christmas movies, Home Alone, tonight. What's your favorite holiday movie? I'd love to know. We are actually gonna take two weeks off. So this will be our last vlog for the remainder of 2021. We will be picking up shortly after the New Year's holiday. So about the second week in January. We need some rest. We know all of you are out celebrating the holidays as well. Hopefully you're getting some rest and getting ready to kickstart 2022 into being an epic, awesome, wonderful year. If you like this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so that way you're alerted the next time we post our next video. We appreciate all of you so much. 2021, I know for so many people has been a challenging year. We hope you're doing well. And I know the holiday season can be super fun and spirited, but it's not that way for many. So if this is a tough time for you, we just want to let you know that we're here with you. We're supporting you and sending you our love and well wishes. And we're thankful that you're here. Wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, we're thankful for you. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and happy new year. Get even more in the festive holiday spirit. If you like this video, head let us. Bob, festive holiday head bob. Head bob.